In Creo Parametric, you can export models to the STL or stereolithography format. To do that, we will go to the File drop-down menu, then Save As, and Save a Copy. This opens up the Save a Copy dialog box. Then you can go to the Type drop-down list and choose STL as the output format. You can change the file name if you want. Here we have an Options button. I will click on it, and it opens up a dialog box with a bunch of settings. First off, you can choose if you want to include construction bodies in the export. You can also choose the file format, whether it is going to be binary or ASCII. And then we have a bunch of different settings for the tessellation. The first one is tessellate with steps. That will create a more regular mesh. And if you check this option, you'll notice that tessellate part components with proportional step sizes becomes available. I have an assembly, so I am going to choose that so I can get a more refined mesh. And we also have this option to tessellate part components with proportional cord heights. So if you have parts of different sizes, you might want to use that option. Then we have a bunch of settings for lattices if you're creating those different kinds of additive manufacturing elements. So when I expand that, we have an option for penetration into shell. So that defines the penetration depth for all lattice geometry that is adjacent to a solid wall. There's also this related option to cap beams with a half sphere. It's related to it and will override the penetration value in certain situations. Then we can choose to merge and blend with the shell. We can check that option. And if you do that, you can also control the blending intensity, which by default is no. You can crank it up to a higher value. But I really don't have any lattice elements in here at all, so I don't care about those options in this particular situation. If you're changing these settings over and over again, you can save these different settings to a profile and then load them whenever you open up this dialog box, or you can use a config.pro option to load this different profile every time that you launch your Creo Parametric session. I will click the OK button. Then we have this box here to check for Customize Export. In a bunch of the different type options for export, this doesn't do anything, but you definitely want to check this if you are exporting an STL file. And in a moment, I'm going to click the OK button, and you'll be able to see the dialog box that opens up. Let me click OK. Because I checked that Customize Export button, we get this Export STL dialog box, and there are a bunch of good choices in here. First off, since this is an assembly, I can choose which components I want to export. By default, all parts is selected. I'm happy with that. Or you could include which components that you want to export or exclude certain ones. You can also change the coordinate system that is being used as a reference for export. I'm happy with the default coordinate system. Once again, we can change the file format between binary and ASCII. Here's a checkbox for allowing negative values. But here are the real controls that you want to use in the export STL dialog box. And I'm going to go to these ones down at the bottom. These options here for use proportional chord heights and use proportional step sizes are checked because I checked the options in the previous dialog box. And just to show you what you're going to get without these options, I'm going to uncheck them. Also, step size, this was also one of the options that I turned on in the previous dialog box. And so here we have some default values for the chord height and the angle control. I'm going to hit the apply button just so you can see what we would get with the default settings. And so there you see the different triangles, the different tessellation that you get from the STL format. And to be honest, STL is kind of a crude output. Its most common use is for 3D printing. And STL is quite an old format. It was old back when I started using it in 1993 at Lockheed Martin. And so sometimes you're like, ah, oh, this is a little too crude for me. So that's where you can start playing around with these different values. And so chord height, 
Well, by having a smaller value for the chord height, the more this will approximate the shape of the geometry. So I'm going to change this to 0.1 and then hit the apply button. And you can see that we're getting a bit of a finer mesh, especially in the seat. Then we have this value for the angle control. And angle control goes from a minimum value of zero to a maximum value of one. And this is for additional refinement to match the different shapes, to match the curvature of the geometry. Zero is no refinement, but closer to one or a value of one is the maximum amount of refinement. So I can try 0.8. We can hit the apply button to see if this makes any difference. Didn't really see much uh, from looking at it. Here's this other control for the step size. And once again, by using a smaller step size, the more it will approximate the geometry. Let me rotate the model so that we're looking a little bit more straight on. I think I'm going to start seeing some improvements around this area. So let's change this from a value of 2.3 to a value of about 1 and then hit the apply button. And so now we're getting some highlighting. It did refine the tessellation in these different areas, but one of the surfaces here is now highlighting in green. And whenever you see this highlighting in green, that's an ind indication that we might have some trouble with dividing the surfaces into the tessellated geometry. So we would probably want to change some of the different settings. Maybe I want to turn off step size, but I also do want to show you some of the other different changes. So I'm going to use the proportional chord height settings. Let me hit the repaint button real quick and then hit the apply button. And so now by clicking that one, I'm not seeing any green in the model, but you're seeing that we're getting a really, really fine mesh. And if I take a look at the message area, I'm being told that this is generating now a total of 83,000 triangles in the export. Let's try the option for use proportional step sizes. So change the step size based on the size of the component. I'll click the apply button. And now we have an even tighter mesh. We would end up getting almost 157,000 uh, triangles or facets that are going to be output to the .stl file. And maybe this is a little bit much. Let me dial down, hit the apply button. Let me turn off the step size, hit the apply button. Let me actually repaint and then hit the apply button. See if we're still getting that green. Nope, we're not getting the green. Uh, let's just try some one of these. Again, you do definitely want to play around with this to see what kind of output that you are getting uh, in order to choose what you want for the export. So again, I kind of get a little bit addicted to playing around with the numbers. But anyhow, let's say that I am happy with this particular tessellation, this kind of mesh. I can click the OK button. And there I have my STL file exported and I can import it into another program or maybe import it into a 3D printer if I want to print this. And I can repaint the screen so we can turn off the display of the tessellation. So there you have it. That's how you can export STL.